I'm Adam Ebert with Ebert Honey. I'm the primary owner at Ebert Honey. Uh, my dad started it about 30 years ago. At this point, we are doing a little bit of pollination, honey production, and we're still based out of Linville, Iowa, and we have a second location north of Iowa City in Mount Vernon. The honey production is really how we started in the bee business and is also very important to us on the business side, cash flow wise and also connection to customers. That's the first thing they think of when they think of beekeeping is that there must be honey. The reality is that a lot of the bigger beekeepers in the U.S. no longer prioritize honey production. Uh, that's especially because pollination has become more lucrative in connection with almond pollination especially, but many other crops as well. But here we do tens of thousands of pounds of honey every year and we direct market basically all of it by putting it into bottles with our own label and also selling it by the bucket and barrel to other customers that have other bulk uses for it. So most of the honey that we bottle is produced somewhere between late May and early August. So that's the summer blend of flowers that are produced in Iowa. And that can be a mix of clover flowers, tree foil, a couple of trees, one is black locust, another is basswood, and none of this stuff is perfectly reliable for giving a crop, so it's sort of a basket of possibility. And every year the blend is a little different color, a little different flavor, and those are just some primary sources that we track. We also produce and distribute beeswax, which is kind of an accidental part of our business that when we harvest, one of the byproducts is some of the wax that the bees use to cover the honey when they're storing it. And we cut away that wax and melt it down into blocks. So as we grew, we had some wax and increasingly more wax that we wanted to do something useful with. Originally candles seemed like a good idea, but we weren't very good candle salespeople. So what has happened is we wind up selling it by the block in filtered or unfiltered forms. And filtering is just a matter of a little paper filter. It's nothing complex. We supply it to all kinds of users. Some of them are successful candle makers. Uh, we sold some for a finish on jets in Canada. Metal casters use it as a release agent. We've had it coated on shrimp tanks along the coast. It's kind of an endless array of uses. But one of the consequences is we also buy up regionally produced beeswax uh, to distribute because we only produce a small fraction of the weight that we produce in honey. A small amount of wax can hold a lot of honey, so demand for wax is much higher than what we produce. So we're primarily a regional distributor of beeswax rather than producing the bulk of it ourselves. Well, we had the good fortune of slightly predating people's passion for local goods, but also growing in sync with it over the past 20 or so years in this region as people have gotten more excited and supportive about doing things other than buying from large distributors and big box stores. This is going to be the fourth year that we will send our bees to California for almond pollination. One of the changes in the past two decades of beekeeping since we started is that pollination now has more value than the honey crop. The two to four weeks of high value almond pollination is worth more than the entire U.S. production of honey. Uh, like I said, honey is still very important to us because we are a bottler distributor of what we produce, but almond pollination has kind of taken over some of our beekeeping schedule. And that's because we send them out in December and then they spend the winter in Northern California or in a potato cellar in Idaho. We've tried that a couple of times as an experiment. And then they will begin their pollination of almonds sometime around Valentine's Day in February. And the bees return in early April or late March. And so all of the logistics that are involved with almond pollination are kind of daunting, but the great advantage is that the bees get to be quite active and in significantly warmer temperatures in January and February and March. And so we're pretty much two months ahead of schedule with bee production, if you can think of it that way, so that our hives are more advanced earlier in the year. So almond pollination is also what allows us to supply bees to other Iowans because it puts us ahead in the beekeeping calendar and you want your bees in the springtime and we can divide from our bees that go to almonds and create new hives for other people back here in Iowa.
beekeeping is, to a lot of people, a pretty strange way to make a living. But there's a lot of good and a lot of importance and a lot of fun that goes into it too. That this is a family business that's just going into its 41st year if you go back to the year that my dad got his first bees. The significance of bees is much more about food supply than it is about honey production. Like I said, people assume that honey is your number one goal but the overall agricultural value in the U.S. is really about pollination. These bees help create a lot of food. Some of those foods are essentially totally dependent on bee pollination, like the almonds that we help pollinate. But they're also important helpers in other crops, such as seed production, or if you're doing the apples, pumpkins, or general produce. Down around Kelowna, we help make zucchini and summer squash. And so even in our little sphere here in central and eastern Iowa, we touch a lot of crops that go beyond honey. That idea of food production, beyond honey production certainly, is one of the best things about doing this uh, at a time when it's hard to keep them alive. Not many people are interested in doing it for a lot of reasons, part of it being the sweat and the stings. But it's extremely gratifying to be part of a family business that is part of food production and also keeps beekeeping going. There used to be a lot more beekeepers of significance in Iowa, but it's gotten quite difficult. Forage has changed and the level of expertise you need to kill the parasites that threaten the bees year in, year out has gotten, unfortunately, to be a high learning curve. So we're doing the best we can. There's endless challenges, but there's a lot of good and enjoyment that goes into it and comes out of it as well. So we hope that we can hold it all together and keep it going for another few decades.